Do you see the word Christmas on one of these bins? That's because we are going to do a new, fun, wonderful pattern for Christmas. I told my artist daughter that I wanted a flying reindeer to run through my wall or on my wall or around my wall. And so she helped make this beautiful pattern for us to make today. And so it is really, really fun. It's simple, it just takes squares. So you see me taking scraps and cutting them into two inch squares so that we can have them. And then I'm going to put them away in my project bin. I always cut way more squares than the pattern calls for because I just want variety and I want to have a choice until the very end. This is my background fabric. I'm going to do it for the background and I'm just showing you it's an older fabric, but I love it. It's gonna be really, really beauty. I love the little yellow stars, there aren't very many, and it needed a lot of help from ironing. So you really do want your fabric to lay flat and be straight, especially when you're cutting two inch squares. Yes, I really am a salvage saver, and someday we'll do something fun with those, maybe here on YouTube. I love this background fabric, and I'm just quickly cutting two inch strips so that I can then turn it the other way and cut it at two inches to make a bunch of squares. As we made this pattern, we decided not to have the background be in strips, and I want to show you why. Here is another sample that I'm making. Look how beautiful this fabric is, and because it's modeled, as we cut it up, you can see light, dark, light, dark, and it just gives so much dimension to the sky. Here is what it would look like if we were going to strip piece it. It just wouldn't have that great look. It's worth sewing all the same colored squares back together. I wasn't sure it was, but I do think it is now that I've been playing with the pattern. I want to show you this tip for when I'm cutting a lot, a lot of squares and I'm using yardage. I like my squares to face up, so I'm opening the whole strip and laying them very carefully together. And then I'm doing a second strip right on top. And because they're cut perfectly straight, I can make sure that they're straight. So I'm lining them up, then I take my ruler and I cut two inches. And you can tell the way I'm holding with my hand that I'm making sure nothing shifts, nothing moves, and I just go as far as it feels good. And then as I stack them up, all of the fabric has its right side facing up and I don't ever have to flip it around or play with it. It's just the way I want it. So I just do that sometimes. I just think it's worth it. Now we get to lay it out on my design floor. I love my design floor. And this is like doing a cross stitch pattern. And in fact, you could look in your cross stitch books if you have any, and any little ornament that you have would work to make a quilt out of. The other trick to this is you could make this in a bigger size. These are two inch squares. You could make them with two and a half or three inch squares if you want a big cuddle quilt out of it. Or if you just want a really tinier wall hanging and you're a good seam stress it's remember it's harder as you get smaller to be accurate but you can do it if you want to do one and a half inch squares that's really fun too I hope you noticed that I laid all of my red blocks out so that I could see every fabric. That way I can choose what fabric I want where. Some of the fabrics have strength to them. Some have a little bit of green in them. And so I want to balance them, put them across from each other. I don't want them too close together. So somehow laying all of my blocks out so that I can choose the different blocks I want makes my brain really, really happy. If you wanna make one of these darling reindeer, there are many and varied options for you. The first one is you can watch this video and build it as you watch me build it. And that seems like a big pain to me, but go ahead if you want to, that is an option. Another option is we have the pattern available at our website. And because we love you, and because you've been such amazing support, then we are selling it for less than half off for the whole month of November, just for you. That makes it $2 all through the month of November. So for $2, you can get our pattern. Our pattern has reindeer running left and reindeer running right because different people are gonna want their reindeer to go different directions. So if you want a pattern, go visit our website. You can see me putting the numbers up the side. That's because it's time for me to pin them together and get it ready. And these numbers are totally gonna be in my way as I piece this together, but I still put them there because I do not want to get confused. 
used. And especially with a pattern like this, if you make a mistake, it will be glaring. So I pin every square together in a big jolly row. Jolly, cause you know, it's Christmas. And I get it ready. So this is number one and number two, and I won't make you watch me do all of them, but you get the idea. As I fold these up, I just get them together and I pile them on top of each other and they are all going to be ready to sew together. So here I'm picking them all up in order because I like mine in order. And you can see that one is closest to me, 20 is far away. So I start with row one, it's just the background, but I start sewing it together. Remember that what matters here, because everything is a square, is that you are consistent. So whatever size seam you decide to use, whether you use a quilter's quarter inch seam or some size seam you make up at your house, you want to be so consistent with yourself. And that is what is going to make this wall hanging look good when you're done. While I'm sewing these two rows together, and every time I sew two rows together, I play this little game with myself. They're short little rows, and I see how many seams I can get in before I cut them apart. It usually ends up being about three because I have to be really careful. Watch my fingers as I sew the blocks. I take my middle finger and my index finger. I lock the blocks against the bed of my sewing machine and then I push them in to sew the seam. And this makes for very accurate, very nice blocks when I'm done sewing them. So if you haven't tried this technique before, try it. You just use your middle finger, index finger. And I do it that way every single time. And that helps me have very consistent seams and make this beautiful, beautiful row. If you've watched my other videos, you know my pressing rule. Away from the odd, and one is an odd number. So we have to press the seam away from the number. So it goes this direction, away from the odd, and towards even, because we love even keeled things. So away from the odd, towards the even, and these are pressed and ready to sew together. And I take the pin off and put it up out of my way of the seam. I just left one number on, and you kind of have to press around it and work around it or you you melt the top of your pin on the back of my machine you can see that I started row three that's what you do so I'm sewing this whole row and one and two together that seam and then I play with row four and I start row three and row four as I'm sewing the long rows together. So here I am pressing very carefully, opening the seam so that I can see the beginning of my beautiful reindeer art piece. That is the trick I wanna show you. And you have to then move the number down and keep track of where you are with that number. I don't know if you have this experience, but when I'm making an art piece like this, I can barely stand to stop as it grows and grows. Here I'm checking my seams. Are they even? Are they accurate? Is it the same width across? Because if it isn't, it's easy here to start maybe having a little bit tighter of a seam on one end to even it up. So as I go, I have that spot check every once in a while so that I can fix it as I go and make sure that my piece is going to be square. And that's a trick that us old timers use to square up our quilts. Just make it happen as you sew and it works better. Look how beautiful this reindeer is. Yes, magic. And I quilted it with black on the black and red on the red because I didn't want to see the quilting thread go across this. The contrast is too great. It's so beautiful to me. I can't decide on color schemes which one I like best. I love the red and black, but this one, it's so ethereal with its white reindeer in the blue night sky. And I quilted it with kind of a swirly, windy, blizzardy quilting look. So it really does look beautiful. We'd love to hear in the comments if you like the blue and white one or the red and black one better. And we'd also love to hear which color are you going to make your reindeer. Merry Christmas from us. We hope you have a wonderful season. Stay merry and creative.